Isn't it crazy that it's been four years since I've done one of these videos? And yes, I am sitting down again for a little bit because I I'm indecisive with my setups. What I have to share with you today are seven different rap songs that just hit me right in the heart. Those songs where you just have to stop and think for a minute after you hear them. Also, I just wanted to let you guys know real quick before we start that there is still a link at the top of the description that you can click on to get 90 days of Taito's Hi-Fi subscription for just $1 or 90 days of their Hi-Fi Plus subscription for just $2. I worked with them on the last video and my link is still active, so you can still click on that to take advantage of their limited time promotion. This is CDTV Productions. Make sure that you have a playlist ready to save these songs to as we go along because these are song recommendations and um things are gonna get pretty intense just from the first pick my man got her in the yard forever and her friends want to help but it's hard to tell her hard to let her know that a man's possessive and aggressive making an 11 minute long song this consistent and engaging while sticking to a specific story with a deep message behind it isn't easy but that is what dave does with leslie one of the saddest and most memorable songs from his album psychodrama and what it's about is pretty simple abusive relationships and how they can strip someone of their individuality and how they can take a turn for the worst. This is told through the story of Leslie, who I believe is a fictional character, but is based on an actual relative of Dave's, as he mentions later on in the album on the song Drama, most likely being based on his own mother because he mentions her being physically abused on his most recent album, We're All Alone In This Together. I was in intensive care when I was born, mummy fell down the stairs with I was gonna live or not was something uncertain. I used the word fell with the commas inverted. What he rapped about in that segment there has quite a few similarities to the story that Dave tells on Leslie, which is pretty gut-wrenching to say the least. The message is the most important part of the track, obviously, but in terms of the songwriting, that's something else that I find extremely impressive on this track. Like, there's even a point where something that Dave mentioned three minutes earlier in the song comes back around to reveal a twist in the story, and it's so well done that it just hits brutally when you realise what's happening. For anyone who has heard the song, without spoiling too much for those who haven't, I'm talking about the voicemail. After over eight minutes of Dave telling Leslie's story, with the instrumental gradually becoming more intense and dramatic as he does, he addresses the listener directly. Urging women in similar situations situations to get support while acknowledging that that is easier said than done and he can never fully relate to something like that and making men listening question whether someone they know is secretly going through something like this then it's capped off with an outro from ruel which almost serves as like an epilogue to the whole story with all of her metaphors about things being incomplete which is the way that leslie feels it is certainly a challenging listen but i think it's a very important and impactful one a link for this song and all the other ones that I'm going to cover in this video will be down in the description below because I'm just here to recommend the songs, but they're definitely best experienced by yourself afterwards. Pops up something you would have watched, I'm like classic. This is some shit I would have seen you watch and it just laughed at. Your patterns are still in place and your algorithm is still in action. In my best and worst albums of 2021 tier list, I said that this was one of the most existentially depressing songs that I've ever heard. And considering that was just like, two months ago, yeah, I still feel the same way. It almost plays out like a Black Mirror-esque plot, with Richie with a T grieving who he later revealed in an interview to be his stepdad, while acknowledging that his stepdad still exists to algorithms within technology. So, for example, if you went onto the Netflix account of somebody close to you that has passed away, the Netflix algorithm will still be working a way to suggest new content to them that it thinks they'll like, and asking them to jump right back in as if they're still here. Hence the song being named Top Picks For You. How did I miss my mouth like that? Like, bro. <laughs> Something about that just, just feels really depressing. And it um, sounds even more so in the song with its somber, experimental sound. I'm not sure if this is going to make any sense at all, but this song sounds like Liminal Space's look. I don't think I've ever heard the idea of grief being presented this way in a rap song before, and that just makes it all the more noteworthy. Thank 
Thinking about the times we had Thinking about the time we spent Tell me why you left when you told me this was forever and If there is any song on this list that some people are gonna question being here is this one. Because a vocal minority of rap fans can't stand the Kid Leroy, whether it's due to the way that his label has marketed him over the past couple years, or the fact that he's just basically a pop star now. But I don't care, this song really hits in my opinion, and that's the only criteria it needs to meet for it to be here. Sure it's not as wordy or lyrical as all the other ones, but for me it's the raw emotion and melodies that carry this one forward. And then the fact that this is someone that was just 16 years old at the time, singing about losing important figures in his life, presumably including his uncle and his friend and mentor who he lived with for several months, Juice World. That is pretty heavy if you ask me. The song covers that exact topic within the lyrics, with Leroy talking about the effects that being familiar with grieving that early into his life is having on him, while tying it into the theme of the album that the song comes from by talking about how experiencing these losses can make him feel more insecure and relationships. If you've already lost two people incredibly close to you, that fear can always be lingering in the back of your mind that if you get close to someone else, it might just happen again. It's a great sounding song with a lot of commercial appeal, but I think there's a lot packed into it and a lot of emotional weight to it. How about them bullets they slow you up? You ain't really down, we watched you grow up. Anyone in my audience that's watched the German TV show Dark, that beat that Lupe raps over probably sounds pretty familiar to you. And that's because it samples Goodbye by Apparat, which would go on to be the theme song for Dark, which in itself is already a pretty gloomy and depressing sounding piece of music. Now, while Lupe sampled Goodbye before Dark even existed as a show, coincidentally, the concept of the track actually really strongly ties into some of the themes of the show that would first air for Four years later. The name of the song, Janila Forever, comes from an incredibly tragic real life incident where a six month old baby was shot fatally multiple times in Chicago, in an attack that was targeting her dad who was with her at the time. So Lupe created this track to really emphasize that Jonila's entire life and potential was taken away before she even had the chance to live it. By rapping about an alternate reality in which she was never shot and went on to live an incredibly successful life, eventually becoming a doctor and working at a free clinic in Chicago to help people there. With a line at the end of the third verse that really ties it all together and sort of hits home this alternate reality idea, making you realize again that this isn't what actually happened in real life. The fact that the first couple verses cover some really simple stuff like Jonila taking her first steps, saying her first words, reading a book, it just really hammers home this idea that she never got the chance to do anything really. This was an incident that I unfortunately hadn't even heard about before hearing Lupe's song. But but he opened my eyes to it and the deeper implications of just how bad gun violence in Chicago can really get. This song does its part in helping her story live forever. Wish I was stronger, wish that I could survive. Turn on the TV, let it wash my brain. Pretend that family's my family to avoid the pain. Following on from that, Growing Pains 3 is a track that mainly has two themes. One of them being growing up in a rough area and the second one being growing up in a rough household, two things that Logic experienced when he was younger. The track opens up with a skit where a few guys are having a conversation and it ends with them getting shot, which Logic said was based on the first time that he heard gunshots right outside his window when he was just a kid. That then bleeds into the first half of the song, which represents the thoughts racing through the mind of a 15 year old Logic when he's lying in bed at night trying to sleep. Talking about growing up with an absent father, his mother being in jail, and living off of welfare and food stamps, which is all true to how his life was. On top of being a hard hitting track, that first verse is just one of my favorite flows that Logic has ever done. It's so damn clean. And then before you know it, a beat switch abruptly happens after the first verse, just instantly making the tone of the song even sadder with that Frank Duke sample. Feel like nobody in front of me, I can feel the vibe. This part of the track represents, once again, a 15-year-old Logic falling asleep and wrapping his subconscious thoughts. 
parents. Dreaming of being successful and having a happy family, like the ones that he saw on the TV shows that he watched when he was a kid. But the crushing final lines of the song let us know that whenever he woke up or whenever he finished watching the TV shows and pretending that the families in them were his own, he just snapped right back into his hellish home life. Till I snap out the fable when that TV turn off and I realize I'm back in hell. Logic is extremely successful and well off nowadays, but this track shows that there was a time where the only time that he was happy was when he wasn't awake. Making this song to show other people going through the same thing that he knows just what it feels like. Got a phone call from one of my niggas, said my homeboy Reese. He just lost one of his kids, and when I heard that, I just broke into tears. Here we have three different verses with three different perspectives that center around the theme of Jay-Z's hook, that there has to be more to life than struggles and hardship. On Jay's verse, he starts off talking about the paranoia of the hustler lifestyle that he lived in the early 90s, not knowing if he'll get arrested or end up dead on any given day, and then closing out the verse by talking about how things got even worse on top of all that when his girlfriend at the time suffered a miscarriage. That would be difficult for anyone to handle, but that piled on top of all the other stress that he was feeling from the street life made him reevaluate and think to himself, there's got to be something else out there for me. Beanie Siegel's verse feels slightly more disconnected to me and doesn't strike a chord with me as much, but then we get to the last verse by Scarface, and it is one of the main reasons why people recognize this song as something special. The story behind it is that Scarface actually had a completely different verse written for this track originally, but right before he was going to go and record it, he got a phone call letting him know that his friend's son had just died in a fire. That prompted Scarface to go and rewrite his verse, and according to Jay-Z, he went straight into the booth and recorded it all in one take right after, dedicating this new verse to his friend, Reek, saying that he doesn't feel it would be right to rap about his own struggles after hearing that news. It's something you have to really hear to appreciate it. The emotion in Scarface's voice is just so clear, and it elevates the track from something that was pretty emotional to just completely devastating, but also kind of wholesome in how heartfelt and supportive Scarface's verse is to his friend. I don't know why I'm over here, this job is evil. They send me here to Vietnam to kill innocent people. Now the last one we have here is pretty different to anything else that I've covered so far because, as I'm sure you've gathered, this one is about war, specifically the Vietnam War. R.A. the Rugged Man's verse is always mentioned as the highlight on here, and I will get to it in a little bit, but I think Vinnie Paz's verse is great in its own right too. On the track, he raps from the perspective of an American soldier that's in Vietnam, questioning why why they're even there, highlighting the overall pointlessness of the war and the amount of innocent Vietnamese people that were killed during it. This line that I'm about to play in particular really sticks with me. I didn't sign up to kill women or any children. For every enemy soldier, we kill a six civilians. I don't think R.A. outshone him here to the point where his verse doesn't stand out at all. I still think Vinny had some really impactful bars. But now we can get to the acclaimed R.A. the Rugged Man verse on this song. He did indeed go off on this one. On top of the flow and rhyme scheme just being ridiculous and flawlessly executed, his verse is a true story like he says at the start of it. With R.A. sharing the story of his father, Staff Sergeant John Thorburn, who actually fought in Vietnam. And it seems to start off with him enjoying himself, and the combat almost giving him a sense of purpose. However, towards the end of the two minute verse, things start to get pretty intense when we hear the story of how a chopper that he was in crashed after the pilot was shot, and John himself was shot in the chest, having a near-death experience where he dreamed of a world with no conflict and division. He later wakes up in the hospital and survives, but it's not over yet as he felt the effects of Agent Orange, which, if you don't know, was a highly toxic chemical that the US dropped all over Vietnam that had long-lasting repercussions. The effects of being exposed to this toxic chemical while in Vietnam caused John to later have two kids that were born severely handicapped. 
with one of his kids eventually passing away from what we can only assume were complications from the severe disabilities. And all of that is told over this really haunting instrumental. It just really puts a spotlight on how this war wasn't good for anybody involved. Wars generally aren't. It was a dark period in history and this song helps to continue to shine a light on it. And on that note, that covers it for this edition of the most heartbreaking rap songs that I've heard. All songs that aren't the most cheerful listens, but I love each and every one of them and what every artist had to say on them. So if you want a blast from the past, click here on the screen to watch a video of mine that is four years old now and definitely isn't as good as what I'm making now. On second thoughts, don't click that. Don't do it. Much love to all of my Patreon supporters and a special shout out to my biggest supporters on there and those are Big Daddy Foe, David David, Griffin Upchurch, I Am Region and Ryan Shadow 507.